Singapore banks are safe, stable, and extremely well managed. And while everyone you talk to says you cannot open a bank account in Singapore remotely, that's completely wrong, at least most of the time. The majority of people can still open a Singapore bank account remotely. This includes citizens of the United States, United Kingdom, EU, Canada, Australia, and many other Western countries. But there are major caveats. Conditions apply. And depending on where you live, expect restrictions. I'm gonna share these caveats, conditions, and restrictions, along with the exact profiles that can and cannot open a Singapore bank account in a minute. But in case this is your first time on the channel, my name is Chris, I'm the head of banking relationships at Global Banks. We're a team of banking experts who help businesses and individuals overcome their cross-border banking challenges. I recently caught up with a few of the bankers in Singapore that we've been dealing with for many years, and I wanted to bring you up to speed on who can and cannot open Singapore bank accounts as a foreign non-resident, including remote account opening. Now, in case you're not familiar with the banking situation in Singapore, there have been a lot of changes over the last year and a half. Let's just say we have certain clients that are very happy they came to us in early 2023 and managed to open accounts remotely, which they would not be able to open today. Basically, Singapore banking has three categories. Category one are whitelisted clients. These are clients with easy citizenship and residency combinations that basically Singapore banks can onboard with no fuss. Category two are restricted clients. These are citizenship and residency combos that can onboard, but they can't offer a full range of products or services to. So they end up being less desirable to Singapore banks. And category three, these are the blacklisted clients. These are the citizenship and residency combinations that Singapore banks cannot onboard no matter what, usually. Not surprisingly, this includes both internationally blacklisted jurisdictions along with jurisdictions that are blacklisted from a banking and regulatory perspective. Okay, quick note here, just in case your citizenship and residency ends up being blacklisted or restricted and your dreams of banking in Singapore are completely crushed, I just wanna add that Singapore is one of many excellent banking hubs. And frankly, while the banks, regulation, and Singapore itself are world-class, there are equally attractive banking jurisdictions elsewhere for basically every profile. And in certain instances, you'll even find banks that are better matched to your profile and your banking needs. So I'm gonna give you something in a little bit that'll help you identify the best countries for you if you can't end up opening in Singapore. So stick around for that. But first, let's dig into these three categories to see who can and cannot bank in Singapore. Now you might notice there's a bit of blurring between residency and citizenship as I talk through these categories. I just wanna make it clear, I know the difference. The blurring is a reflection of how Singapore banks are thinking through residency and citizenship right now, and basically a reflection of their blacklists and their restrictions. No surprise here, certain citizenships are off limits while certain residencies are also off limits, but certain combinations of citizenship and residency, they make banking possible. And of course, other combinations make banking not possible. It can get confusing, and that's one of the reasons why having your own team of banking experts to help you navigate the entire process can make the difference between being approved or being denied, but more on that later. First, let's talk through the categories. So category one, whitelisted citizenship and residency combinations. This is a pretty straightforward list, starting with the most obvious countries and regions. Don't roll your eyes here, let's just get out of the way. Singapore residents, with basically any passport, yes, they can obviously open Singapore bank accounts. Next up, residents of neighboring countries with almost any passport. Think Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam. Also residents of most other Asian countries can also bank in Singapore, including opening remotely, if they can meet the account opening deposits. Not surprisingly, the bulk of these individuals end up coming from regional powerhouses, China, and certain other international jurisdictions like the UAE are also on this list. Again, people in this category, they can open open in Singapore without restrictions, 100% remotely. If that's you and you'd like help navigating your options, just visit us at globalbanks.com, contact us however you'd like, and we'd be happy to assist you through the process. Now on to category two, restricted citizenship and restricted residency combinations. This is where things start to get a little bit tricky, but also interesting. Different countries have different restrictions at different banks. For example, a resident of Mexico or Paraguay might be able to open at one bank in Singapore, but not at others. Residents of Panama will be restricted by most banks in Singapore, but they may have options to open accounts if they can provide a proof of address and a valid permit or visa in any other country. And in all instances, while residents in these restricted categories can open accounts, they won't be able to access a range of investment products, which basically means they can hold deposit accounts and certain currencies. So what about these blacklisted countries, category three? Well, these are the countries that cannot bank in Singapore no matter what or rather citizens of countries who cannot bank in Singapore. There are obviously the usual suspects that banks basically nowhere in the world will take on. Think North Korea, Syria, Iran. They can't bank in Singapore either. Then there are countries engaged in active conflict, 
Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus to some extent. In most instances, citizens of these countries cannot bank in Singapore, at least not with Singapore banks. Depending on the account balance, the client profile, and the countries involved, you might still find a big international bank, meaning not Singaporean, that is willing to entertain an application from this second group of blacklisted countries. On the other hand, if you're from the US, UK, EU, Canada, Australia, or basically any other developed country, and this is the key part, you live in one of these countries, you will not be able to open a bank account in Singapore. But if you live in Singapore or even Asia more broadly, you'll be in category one and you should be able to go ahead and open accounts remotely. If instead of living in Asia, you live in a restricted country, you may still be able to open accounts, but you will not have access to investment products. That said, if you're from the US or Canada, you probably won't have this option. Now, this isn't some sort of arbitrary attack on foreigners. It's pretty straightforward, actually. The cost of compliance and reporting for these account holders is higher for the banks in Singapore, which means that the accounts are more expensive to onboard and maintain, and residents in these countries are restricted in terms of the investment products that they can access, which means the banks will have significantly fewer ways to recoup the expenses tied to onboarding and maintaining these accounts at higher levels. And to top it all off, Singapore doesn't need or want your money, or anyone's money for that matter. They have more than enough money knocking on their door from all over the world, including significantly easier profiles to onboard with zero restrictions in terms of the investment products that they can offer. Basically, it's always good to remember, at the end of the day, banks are businesses and they need to make money too. So who would you choose? a super simple customer that has increased profitability and basically zero restrictions on what you can offer them, or a paperwork heavy customer with tons of red tape and bureaucracy that you can't sell anything to and you'll have to keep around for years just to make a tiny profit. It's not hard to see why Singaporean banks don't want these customers. Westerners that basically can't invest in anything. But like I said earlier in the video, if you are from the US, UK, Canada, EU, or Australia, or basically any other Western country, you still have options to open excellent bank accounts in excellent banking jurisdictions and access a wide range of investment products. Of course, those options do vary based on how much you can deposit, whether you live at home or abroad, and what you plan on doing with the account. But the point is, you have excellent banking options available, including in top jurisdictions around the world with world-class banks. These options, they generally fall into the premier and private banking categories, which means you should be looking to deposit between 150,000 to 250,000 US dollars for premier access and between 500,000 and $1 million to access private banking. But that shouldn't be an issue, considering the fact that if you were looking to open a bank account in Singapore remotely, you'd definitely be looking at balances in the range of 150 to 250,000 US dollars as a minimum. If you could show up in person, that would be a different story. But again, with your citizenship and residency, if you're from one of these countries, you're not gonna have that option to open accounts. Now, a quick note on the difference between the $250,000 and $500,000 that you're gonna be expected to deposit between Premier and private banking. At that level, you can usually access private banking as well, but Premier banking tends to be a better fit in terms of the cost profile and the benefits that you're gonna be able to extract from your banking relationships. Once you surpass that $500,000 mark, you can start to take advantage of a wider range of private banking benefits, which I'll be diving into in a future video. So if you have any interest in unlocking private banking or international banking more broadly, make sure you're subscribe so you get alerted when we post those videos. Okay, so Singapore, have you figured out which category you're in? Quick math here, if you're from the US, UK, EU, Canada, Australia, etc., and you live in one of those countries, you're blacklisted. Pretty simple, and that means it's time to explore other options. If you live outside of those countries and you have one of those passports, you may be able to bank in Singapore, but it's going to be the premier level. And if you live in Asia, you should be good to go, including opening accounts remotely. But if it's outside of Asia, you're likely gonna have restrictions on your account. I just wanna stress this, regardless of the category you fall into in terms of Singapore banking, there are excellent banking options available to you in a number of other countries around the world. And if you wanna explore those options, we'd be more than happy to help you, either through our banking intelligence platform, Global Banks IQ, or our dedicated account opening service, Global Banks Insider. You can find both of those options over on globalbanks.com forward slash products. But before you do, to help you navigate your options for free, I've had the team include a link to our guide on where to open offshore bank accounts in the pinned comment below, which includes expert briefings on 10 banking hubs, who should open in each, the services you can access, and much more. It's 100% free, so go grab your copy below. Also, if you're interested in banking in Singapore, you're probably gonna get a lot of value out of this recent video that I made on remote account opening, which includes the three strategies our clients use to open accounts without getting on an airplane, ever. So thanks for watching. Go ahead, click that, and I'll see you right over there.